Hello and welcome to the very first Fluid Master UK virtual training module. We're really pleased that you're able to join us. I'm Edward Dando, the Test Lab Supervisor here at our headquarters in Hereford. I'm going to be talking through some toilet repair scenarios and demonstrating the installation of two of our most popular products, a fill and a flush valve. Firstly, for those of you who aren't familiar with our history, Fluid Master is the world's number one toilet repair brand. Established over 60 years ago by inventor and philanthropist Adolf Schopi, Fluid Master quickly became recognised for quality, durability and value. You may be surprised to hear that we market over a staggering 100 million toilet repair products every year and distribute to over 90 countries worldwide. We're proud to say that our global distribution network reaches over 80% of the world's population and Fluid Master product ranges are trusted by plumbers, house builders, product specifiers, bathroom manufacturers and homeowners across the globe. We work hard to ensure that our products are easy to install and incorporate innovative features which sets them apart. You also tell us that you choose Fluid Master because our toilet repair parts are compatible with virtually every kind of system. Ideal for professional installation and appreciated by your customers. Fluid Master products are the perfect partner for all your toilet repairs and we're really pleased that you've been able to join us today for our very first online training module. In this introductory training module, we're going to take a look at some of the most common problematic scenarios which occur within toilets. We'll be discussing fault finding protocols and then move on to diagnosing and repairing the most common toilet repair issues. Hopefully this will offer an insight into the most frequently found problems and how to quickly and easily identify and solve them. After the session, if you'd like to find out more about any of the products we've discussed or locate your closest stockist, you can visit our website at fluidmaster.com or the microsite for our latest fill valve, the Airgap 6000, which can be found at fluidmaster-airgap.com. So let's get started. So there are many kinds of toilets and systems available, but essentially they're all performing the same function. Uh, your toilet can be close coupled like this one, where your system is directly mounted onto your bowl, or you have what we call a, a back to wall system pan against a typical unit there where all you can see is the button behind which there is a unit and your system is mounted inside. Other types of toilets that you might find are what we call a low level where you'll have something like a flush bend your toilet will be a back to wall or a, a low level one where the flush pipe is going in the back your system is mounted on the wall and your flush is traveling down that pan obviously even more traditional styles is where you'll have a very tall pipe the system will be two meters up in the air coming down and you've got a flush chain essentially what's in the system is the same they're all doing the same thing they're all delivering water into your bowl and flushing your toilet. Although there are a variety of toilets and cisterns out there, the amount of tools and tools you're going to need to do the job are all pretty much the same. So a pair of pliers, ideally a pair of pipe grips would help, uh, a couple of different size spanners, your flat and your posi drive screwdriver, pencils always useful, tape measure, a couple of extra seals, or replacement seals if you're doing a repair job, coupling plates or coupling bolt set depending on the type of system you've got, screws and raw plugs for attaching your system to the wall, sponge and a cloth is always helpful, PTFE tape for sealing up threads if you're undoing and replacing your threads, flexible pan connectors are always useful and make life a bit easier if you're changing toilets and systems over blanking plug if you're swapping valves over from one side to the other. Um, those are pretty much the tools you're going to need. For the purpose of today's training, we've set up a clear system on our test rig to explain the parts that are inside. So within our clear system here, we have two main products which are responsible for filling and flushing, hence the names, the fill valve and the flush valve. You may sometimes hear them referred to with alternative titles. Depending on the style you're installing, you may also hear a fill valve referred to as an inlet valve, a float valve, a ball valve, or a ball cock. Or the flush valve, you may hear it called a siphon or a drop valve, depending on the type of valve on which you're installing. So here are the two key pieces of fluid master equipment we're going to be looking at today, and I'm briefly going to explain how they work. So the flush valve. This is what empties all the water out of your system into your bowl and flushes your toilet. So we have a push button, so we push the button, the valve opens, and all the water comes out. 
then we can simply unbayonet the valve, remove it, and then we have two sliders on either side, that side and this side. The writing indicates which one this is, this is the full flush. It tells you on the side here with less or more, so up for less, down for more. So that's your full flush adjustment, you can slide that up, slide that down to get more or less water. On the opposite side, we have the partial flush, so we have a little lug here that we can push in and then slide down, push in and slide up. Again, it's written on the side of the valve, less is up, more is down. So less water, less flush, more water, more flush for your partial flush. So those are your two adjustments. We've got two lugs, two slots in the base, align them back up. Obviously it'll fit back in either way. So we want to make sure that the cable is well away from the fill valve. Slide that back in, reconnect your button. So initially toilet repair starts as a fault finding exercise and it's important to diagnose exactly what the problem is and where it's coming from. Today we're going to be talking about two main problems which are often encountered with faulty toilets, what to consider before starting work on them. Firstly, we'll be talking about a leaky loo scenario, when the water is seen or heard dripping, trickling or hissing within either the cistern or into the bowl itself, although it's worth bearing in mind that some leaks can be silent. The second common issue we'll be considering is when the flush doesn't work or it's weak. So we're going to look at both of these problems in turn and talk about the fault finding or diagnosing the root cause of the problem and then we'll move on and demonstrate how to repair the system and get the toilet working properly again. So we're going to look at uh, fault finding and diagnosis of a, of a leaky loo situation. Um, the most common issues that you're going to find, you walk into your bathroom, you can see in your bowl in your toilet that there's a slight trickle or, or water leaking into your bowl, into your pan. So that's obviously going to be come, coming from your system. So what could be creating that is your flush valve could be letting water past. So obviously we've got a moving part down the bottom here. If there's any debris or anything underneath the seal, water could be trickling in. And obviously the water level is dropping, so the fill valve will then try and refill the cistern every so often. So you, you get this misconception that there's a, an issue with the fill valve because it's temporarily or intermittently trying to fill and then shuts and then fills and then shuts because the water is evacuating from the cistern very, very slowly. Could very simply be down to debris underneath that seal. As I've shown before with the adjustment, we can take that valve out, we can clean that seal, we can clean that seat, and we can put that in, would be the first thing to try to resolve that issue. Secondly, if the cable that's operating, if it's been bent or kinked and it's holding the valve open and it's not closed properly, Again, you're going to get this scenario where water is dripping and leaking out the cistern then will try and refill, so you get this intermittent refill. Again, it could be a misconception that there's a problem with your fill valve because it's intermittent, but there's water leaking out. Another issue you may find when you've got this leaky loo situation with water dripping down the back of your pan is where the fill valve hasn't actually closed properly. It may be due to debris or dirt, or simply due to the fact that the, the float screw height has been set incorrectly. So if the water level is higher than the overflow, or the overflow is lower than the water level, you get water going down the overflow. Overflow then enters the pan, trickles down the back, and you get to this scenario. So you, you get to your system, you take the lid off, you look inside, and you see if the water level is below the overflow or way down to the bottom. And that will give you a good indication of where the issue lies. Obviously, if the valve, fill valve is closed and the water level is at the overflow, there's likelihood that this could be just trickling through. Okay? So, debris, valve height adjustment, overflow adjustment, dirt or debris over the seal and over your seat face. And kind of, those are your main issues that you're going to find in a, in a leaky loo situation. So, another common concern that we encounter. Um, would be a, a weak flush or the flush isn't working properly. 
Um, this is generally down to the amount of water that you're actually flushing out of your cistern. So what you'll find in the cistern is a marked water line in the back of the tank. First of all, make sure that your tank and your cistern is filled up to that water line by making your adjustment screw on your fill valve is adjust to that water line. Secondly, then when you flush, you want to make sure that you're flushing the, the, the maximum permissible volume. So on average, the flush volume out of a cistern should take around three seconds to flush no more than six litres out of your tank. So if it's taking two seconds or less, then you've got a good indication there that you're not flushing enough water. So you need to be able to push enough water out and flush enough water out to see if that helps with your pan-related issue. Now, if that doesn't help, then it's likely that the pan itself and the performance of the pan itself could be in question. So the system itself that's flushing in the correct volume of water, it's then the pan that's not performing properly and doing what it should do. So looking at the 6,000 air gap, um, it's a unique valve. We have height adjustment. We've obviously got water level adjustment. In certain instances, your cistern may be taller, so we need to bring the water level up. In this instance, we'd have to turn the water supply off because we don't want it pressurized when we're adjusting it. But we can adjust the whole valve from the top and we can adjust the height up and then lock it back down again. There's a locking mechanism down here within the valve, which holds the valve in place. We can then turn the water back on and it'll increase the water level. So you have maximum at water adjustment and then you've got your finite water adjustment where you can adjust your screw so the valve shuts off so you can increase or decrease the amount of water you've got in your system so adjustment for the fill valve we've got the the screw on the side this is your float screw so this is kind of like your finite adjustment on your water levels so we can wind this anti-clockwise we'll take the water level down or clockwise we'll bring the water level up in this instance, I've got too much water in the tank, it's almost going down my overflow, but I've lost the amount of adjustment in my screw. So with the unique ability with this valve, we can adjust the height of it. So what we need to do is isolate the water supply, flush a little bit of water out of the tank, and we have a locking mechanism. So we can adjust the height of the valve by releasing the lock, easily by pulling that up, then adjust the height of the valve downwards, and then re-push that chamber all the way down, making sure that it's fully locked in place. Easy to see on a clear tank, not so easy to see when you're looking straight down. The distance between there and there, rule of thumb, making sure that this shoulder here is halfway down, just below the shoulder that you find on the black part around here. Any higher, it's not fully locked into place. So it needs to be pushed all the way down. Then we can have a finite adjustment on that, turn the water supply back on, and there we can see, already shut, we've dropped our water level by that much. We can flush, the valve will reopen and fill back up to that line. Okay, so now I'm just gonna show you how to correctly remove and then reinstall your flush valve. Okay, so first things first, Turn the water supply off. Again, for my demo purposes, I can simply do that. If you've got uh, an isolation valve, vertical is open, horizontal is closed. Get your flathead screwdriver and open or close that as appropriate. So next thing we need to do is empty the system. So flush all the water out. So either pull your lever or press your button and Hold it down to empty all the water out. Again, get your sponge and remove as much of that water from your cistern as possible. So now the next thing we need to do now the cistern's empty is essentially disconnect everything. So we need to disconnect the water supply to get your wrench or your spanner and undo the water supply to your fill valve so that that's loose. Then underneath your cistern, connecting your cistern to your pan if it's a close coupled, 
you're going to have something like a wing nut that's holding the two together. It may look something like that. Um, or we may have a different version that looks something like that. On both sides, we need to undo those nuts. The system may be screwed to the wall. So take the screws out to disconnect the system from all of those possible links. So then next, we need to just carefully lift your system off your toilet. Um, for low levels, you can get access to the bottom. You've just got a flush pipe, so we disconnect that. For the close coupled, where you've got your bolts and, and things going through your system, lift it, lay it on its side. Ideally, get a towel or something on, on your pan, and you can use it on, your, on the pan, or put it directly on the floor. So, we can see the bottom. Underneath, when you've taken that off, you might find yourself with something like a coupling plate, which will have what we call a donut washer sitting on top of it, which is creating the seal between your cistern and your pan. It'll obviously all be slightly squashed and things like that. Or if you don't have a coupling plate, you may have a direct bolt sticking through the bottom of your cistern like that. We shouldn't need to remove these bolts from the bottom of your cistern. Okay, so your coupling plate will be held on by the nut that's holding your flush valve in your cistern. So remove the donut washer. You're more than likely going to need a new one of these because the old one will be old, squashed, and will not have very much sealing properties left in it. So we need to get a new one of those, discard of the old one sensibly and responsibly, and you're exposed with the nut. So then you need a decent sized wrench, and we can get on the nut and undo it. So now we can remove the flush valve from the system, undo that. Using a wrench, if you can't do it by hand, and we've taken the flush valve out. Again, dispose of this responsibly, recycle where possible. So we're going to reinstall our new flush valve. Um, just be aware that we've got the rubber seal on the bottom of the, of the valve itself. When we're thinking about the orientation of where the valve is being fitted inside the system and the overflow and anything, we don't want any conflict between your fill valve and your flush valve. So just bear that in mind when we're repositioning this back in the system. Pop that back in, make sure it's in the middle, getting our nut. At this point, if you do have a coupling plate, you put the plate on first, followed by the nut afterwards. With the bolt sets that are already sticking through the bottom of your system, you don't need to worry about them. So we can tighten that up as much by hand, get yourself your wrench, put that on, hold the valve inside, and then you can tighten your nut another half to three quarters of a turn, nice and secure, nice and leak tight. So now we're almost ready to uh, reconnect our system back to our pan. Uh, we need to make sure we've got a nice fresh donut to reseal between your pan and your system. In this instance, uh, we, we fit it over the nut there to make sure it's a nice snug fit, nice and flat. If you've got the two bolts sticking out of your system, we don't need to worry about that. If you've got your cupping plate, that would have been clamp clamped in place by your nut and your donut then fits in between there. What the donut does is sealing between your pan and your system, so every time you flush, you don't get water spraying out between the two. So we can pop that back on there nice and securely, so when you lift it, it doesn't fall off. So then we can carefully lift the system and drop it back onto the pan aligning those two bolts with the two holes in your pan and just making sure that we're lined up with the holes where we've removed it from the wall and everything's secure. Okay, so the system's now back on your pan. You've got your wing nuts underneath. 
on both sides, put your wing nuts back onto your bolts, tighten those back up. So we're pulling an even compression on both sides of your system. So do one side, then the other, then the other, then the other. If you need to, put some weight on top with the one hand whilst you're tightening with the other so that you get that even compression on this donut seal between your pan and your system. Once that's all connected, then you can reconnect your water supply back to your fill valve and turn your water supply back on. So first things first, we need to turn the water supply off. Um, for, for my demo purposes, I can just simply turn it off like that. More than likely, you're going to have an isolating valve like this. If it's in line, it's open, just flathead screwdriver, turn it horizontal to close that off. That should then close your water supply. So next, we need to check where the water line is within your system. Obviously in this clear tank, we can see it's here. In your ceramic tanks, you're going to be looking from above. There should be a marked water line in the back of your tank. If there's not, then you need to replace like for like of what you've got. So get yourself a tape measure, measure where that water line is, jot it down on a piece of paper. Better still, get yourself a pencil and scribe that line in the back of your system where the water line is. Okay, so next we need to get all of this water out. So we flush the valve, either with your lever or with your button. If you press and hold your button, then you'll get as much water out as possible. As you can see here, we have this residual amount of water left in the tank. When we take the fill valve out, that'll obviously leave a hole and all that water will pour on the floor. So you either need a jug to try and catch that. Better still, get as much water out as possible using your sponge. So you get your sponge in, you squeeze that straight down your bowl and remove all the water from your system. So now our system's completely empty. We need to disconnect the water supply, obviously. Make sure again that the water supply is off. If it wasn't, your system would be refilling. But we need to disconnect that water supply down here. So either with your pipe grips or your spanner, we can undo the water supply. Okay, so we're going to essentially swap over the fill valve. For this instance and this demo, I'm just going to take this one out and then put it back in again just to show you how to remove and how to refit correctly. So the water supply has been disconnected, so we need to get our grips and undo the nut that's holding the valve into the system. So we can undo that and take the valve out. So we've taken the old fill valve out. Um, we need to dispose of that responsibly, recycling where possible. Um, we're going to reinstall the new fill valve, the air gap 6000. A couple of checks to start with. Make sure that it'll fit, make sure the height's right. As you can see here, it's above the top of the system. So we just need to adjust the height, unlock, lock it back into place. Make sure we've got the rubber seal on the bottom. Pop it back in the system and put your back nut underneath and tighten it in. Again, make sure that when your valve is going that it's not interfering with any of the flushing mechanism that's inside your system. Hand tighten and get your wrench and another half turn to maybe three quarters of a turn to tighten that fully and securely to make it leak tight. So now we can reconnect the water supply. Obviously for my demo, I've simply got a flexible hose that I can just quickly tighten that back on. More than likely, you're gonna have your isolation valve that we turned off earlier. It's going to be fixed into position at the bottom where your thread is connected to that and it doesn't really move. So when we're reconnecting that, make sure that the seal that is in the bottom of that is intact. If not, then we may need a new one just to make sure that we don't have any leaks when we turn the water supply back on. Slowly turn the water supply back on. So when the water comes in, 
if we haven't connected anything down here securely, then we're immediately going to see a leak and then we can quickly turn it back off again. So turn it back on. Lift the valve to make sure the water shuts off. This then pressurizes the line and you will again see if we have any issues on our connection that we may need to address rather than having to take it all out and drain it all back down again. Let the system fill and check obviously that our nut's not leaking and we haven't got any issues. So there we go, job done. We've looked at common toilet repair problems and demonstrated the quick and simple installation of new Fluidmaster flush and fill valves. If you'd like to find out more about our product range or you'd like to visit a local Fluidmaster stockist, head over to the website at fluidmaster.com where you'll find product listings and stockists for the UK. There's also a huge amount of information about toilet repair on the site that you may find useful. The Airgap 6000 fill valve has its own microsite that you'll find at fluidmaster-airgap.com. There you will find lots of information and more videos, including one on how to perform a simple service of the valve. And of course, you can keep informed of what we're up to by following us on social media. We're active on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. All you need to do is search on your chosen social platform for Fluidmaster UK and you'll be kept up to date with product launches, exclusive content and news from behind the scenes here at Fluidmaster. All that remains for me to say is thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can get in touch via social media or by emailing us at salesuk at fluidmaster.com. Bye for now.